The Red Raiders officially know their bowl opponent as they will head east to the Independence Bowl in Shreveport, Louisiana to face off against a familiar foe, at least in bowl season, in the Cal Berkeley Golden Bears. Hey, how's it going, everybody? It's R.C. Maxfield here for the Back to 12 podcast. If you haven't already, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and hit that notification bell as well to stay in the know on Texas Tech football all year long. We've got you covered with breaking news, whether that's on the gridiron or off of it. And hey, in today's video, we'll talk about some of that as two assistants for Texas Tech have already interviewed for a job out in West Texas. No, not at Texas Tech, obviously, at UTEP and Zach Kitley and Coach Kenny Perry. We'll discuss that later in the video. But right now, I want to hear from you guys. What is your one word to describe how you feel about Texas Tech landing in the Independence Bowl? We'll talk about the positives, the negatives, if Taj Brooks will play in this game, and the three wide receivers that Joey McGuire actually named in his local media presser that could potentially get a little bit of run for the Red Raiders. But before we get into that, let me know down in the pinned comment below your one word to describe how you feel about Texas Tech landing in the Independence Bowl. All right, let's jump to it. I already told you who they'll be playing. It'll be the Cal Berkeley Golden Bears out in Shreveport. The bowl game will take place on December 16th at Independence Stadium out in Shreveport, Louisiana. Kickoff is scheduled for 8.15 p.m. Central Time. The game will take place on ESPN, not ESPN2, not ESPNU, ESPN. Now, let's look at some of the positives here for the Red Raiders in the sense of getting an Independence Bowl invite, right? First and foremost, you get a Power 5 opponent. However you feel about Cal, whatever it may be, it doesn't matter. They're a Power 5 opponent. That's good for Texas Tech, right? It's also close to DFW, the largest alumni base for Texas Tech. Now, we'll also bring up a negative aspect of that here in just a second, but that is a positive, right? It's also a homecoming for some guys, right? You got Macho Stevenson, who is from Shreveport. He'll get to go back there. You got Justin Horn as well from Louisiana, as well as a few others, including Miles Cole, right? But that's really cool to have some homecoming moments for players. Also, it's another two weeks for players to be around coaches. For those that don't know, in the offseason, there is a limited amount of time that coaches can be around players. Now, strength and conditioning staff, completely different, but coaches like, you know, Zach Kitley, um, whether that's Juice Johnson, whatever it may be, you can only be around them so much. So to have two additional weeks on top of what you've already had is good for the Red Raiders moving forward. Now, that said, there are some negatives for the Independence Bowl, and let's just get them out of the way real quick. December 16th, pardon my language, might have been the shittiest day Texas Tech could play a bowl game. And it's not because it's, you know, hey, Texas Tech is playing in the bowl game. It's not that at all. It's the other activities that are already on the Texas Tech calendar not just in athletics, but also Texas Tech as an institution. Okay, but let's start with athletics first. Men's basketball is scheduled to play in Fort Worth against Vanderbilt at 6.30 at Dickey's Arena. Obviously not ideal there in terms of splitting up potentially part of the fan base. Some alumni may say, oh, well, we we live in DFW. I don't want to travel to Shreveport. I'll just go to the basketball game instead of the football game, which I 100% get, right? Not to mention, and arguably even more important than that, It's fall graduation at Texas Tech inside the USA. That's not ideal, right? To be fair, graduation will likely be over by kickoff, right? But that means that less people have the opportunity to travel to Shreveport due to the fact that they are going to go see their loved ones walk across the stage. And let me say, rightfully so, right? But that is something to take into account. Also, excuse me. It doesn't allow those mid-year guys to come in and really potentially get some valuable practices um, under their belt. Now, maybe they get one or two, but Joey McGuire talked about this too in the local media press conference. He said, we're going to try and figure that out. You know, best case scenario, it's three or four, but we'll see how it goes. To me, I would be pretty surprised if any of those guys actually get to practice, right? That's my thought process. So again, some of the negatives, not a great day. Um, in terms of December 16th, just from a logistic standpoint, from a calendar uh, side of things, you know, you got men's basketball in Fort Worth, then you obviously got graduation out in the 806, and then, oh, your football team is playing in Shreveport. That's a hell of a trifecta on any university's calendar, um, I might add. Um, But then also it doesn't allow those mid-year guys like Micah Hudson, Will Hammond, even if it's just three or four practices, 
they likely won't have that opportunity now. Um, you see it at the bottom of your screen right there. Help us get to 9K. I believe at the time of this video, we are 69 subscribers away. Nice. From 9,000. Help us get there before the calendar turns to 2024. Y'all are absolutely the best. And if you haven't already, tell your friends and family about this if they're part of Red Raider Nation. This is the most engaging Texas Tech community on YouTube. It's not close. We're going into the comment section trying to interact with y'all and really get y'all to interact with the show from comment drivers as well. So again, if you like what we're putting out there, daily videos, it's 100% free, men's basketball, football, everything in between, we've got you covered right here on the most engaging Texas Tech community on YouTube in the Back to 12 podcast channel. All right, let's talk about Taj Brooks here as Joey McGuire brought him up. Will Taj Brooks play in the Independence Bowl? Let's get straight to it. I, I, I digress for a second. Hold on. Dramatic pause there. Jalen Hutchings will not play. So let's get that out of the way. He will have his knee scope more than likely, according to Joey McGuire. So the end of his Red Raider career sadly comes to an end. For one of the best defensive players that Texas Tech has had on that defensive line in the past, what, 20 years at least, he's a really valuable player. So he'll have his knee cleaned up and unfortunately not be able to play in the Independence Bowl. Now, Taj Brooks' side of it, McGuire addressed that Taj Brooks went back home this weekend to Maynard. They gave the whole team off to go home, relax, whatever they wanted to do. Um, and Taj discussed the options with his family. McGuire did say that he does expect Taj Brooks to play in the Independence Bowl, but um, you have to remember this. Taj has one year of eligibility left, but he also just had arguably what? One of the best running back seasons um, in Texas Tech program history. I mean, considering how dysfunctional the offense looked at some points, so um, it's going to be interesting to see how that goes. His NFL stock definitely went up because he's a good, solid pass protection guy as well. Obviously, you know what he can do with the rock in his hands, but we'll see what Taj does. But as of right now, it sounds like Joey McGuire does expect him to play in the Independence Bowl. All right, those three wide receivers that Texas Tech head coach Joey McGuire discussed and kind of what the wide receiver position would look like, um, as well as the offensive line here in just a second, um, if the game happened today. Um, let's start with the offensive line. Left to right, it would be both Cannon, it would be Jackson, and then you go Wilburn, then you go Stats, and then you go Rodgers, according to Joey McGuire, if the game was today. Now, obviously, things can change. He mentioned a couple guys that could rotate in there, and he wants to see some of the young guys and how they perform in bold practice, rightfully so, but that's the projected starting offensive line as of today, December 3rd. This is being posted on Monday, December 4th. Um, that's where Texas Tech is at off on the offensive line. Now, when it comes to wide receivers, he said that the three starting wide receivers from outside to in would be Aiken, Xavier White, and then Jordan Brown on opposite of Aiken. He also mentioned guys like McCray, um, obviously Lowick. He got Brady Boyd. And then you have these three wide receivers that I'm really interested to see what they can do. I'm not expecting them to be all Big 12 players from the jump. And I don't even know if they get there. But I do think they bring a different dynamic to the wide receiver group that Texas Tech had this year. And those three guys are TJ West, one of the fastest players on the Texas Tech roster. Legit 4-3-2 speed. I mean, he is that guy when it comes to running, right? DJ Crest, a bigger wide receiver. And then you got Kelby Vaslin as well. So I really like those guys. Those were the three wide receivers that Joey McGuire actually named at his local media press conference yesterday after Texas Tech was announced to the Independence Bowl. But before we head out of here, one more time, if you haven't already, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And then I'm sure some of y'all are waiting for this. Texas Tech assistant coaches Zach Kitley and Coach Peary interviewed for the UTEP head coaching job. This from Colin Deaver of KTSM TV in El Paso. He reported another name that I can also confirm that UTEP has targeted and spoken with per sources is Texas Tech offensive coordinator Zach Kitley, who until now has been pretty quiet. He also went on to say, expect to hire within the next day or so at this point. I couldn't tell you who I think the favorite is. So obviously, Zach Kitley has been in talks. He also went on to say, Kenny Perry, Texas Tech running back coach and associate head coach, interviewed for the UTEP job over the weekend in Dallas. So you could be potentially losing an assistant there. Um, they got a UNLV guy in the running as well. It looks like they want to go the young offensive route. So that kind of fits the mold of Zach Kitley, uh, but we shall see, and we'll keep you updated here when it comes to Zach Kitley, Coach Perry, and their potential chances to land that UTEP job 
out in El Paso. Again, I am RC Maxfield reminding you one more time, if you want to be a part of the most engaging Texas Tech community here on YouTube and really maybe in Red Raider Nation, I don't know. I'll let the people decide. Be sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to stay in the know on Texas Tech football all year long on the gridiron and off when it comes to recruiting, rumors, and everything in between. We've got you covered right here on the Back to 12 podcast channel.